All right, so here we are with Spider-Man Homecoming, which is the, ah, uh, this is the third film of the year for me that I've seen so far. I've seen Kong Skull Island, loved it. i seen Wonder Woman, loved it, and now Spider-Man Homecoming. And yeah, I did not, <laughs> did not go see that, that travesty called Transformers The Last Night. I've pretty much given up on the Transformer movies since the third one because it kind of clicked with me. I kind of knew with Michael Bay was doing, he was just going to throw out the same crap out there over and over again. So I saw it coming. I saw it coming from a mile away. But anyways, this video is going to be about Spider-Man Homecoming, which is the uh, fifth Spider-Man film, but second reboot, depending where you want to place this one. Uh, calling it a second reboot would make more sense to me because the first reboot was with Andrew Garfield and they made a sequel to that one. They were also setting up for a third one, but Marvel went over to Sony and said, hell no, give Spider-Man back to us. We have to save your ass, Sony, because you're, oh, you are failing with these Spider-Man movies. But, um, no, the deal that they worked out with Sony was great. It did work out for the best because I had a fun time watching Spider-Man Homecoming. I would say this is the funniest Spider-Man movie that was ever made. Not to say that the other ones were not fun, but it's just that they don't really throw a lot of sad moments in your face. It's just all fun. Just, just a lot of humor. Bunch of humor. Just humor throughout the entire film. Just... Humor here, humor there, humor everywhere. Um, you know, they don't really deal with the whole uh, origin story and going through Uncle Ben dying again. You know, we already seen that in, like, the Tobey Maguire movies, and we've seen that in the Andrew Garfield movies. Uh, by the way, did I say this was my third favorite Spider-Man film? Uh, I don't believe I said what was my other two. Uh, my other two favorites were the first original two with Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 1. I enjoyed those a lot. I did not like Spider-Man 3. That was a huge disappointment for me because I was so hyped up about the black suit and Venom and all that. And they let me down so hard. Just so hard. It's uh, mostly because of what they did to Venom. And I loved Venom, and when I saw that at the theater for the first time, I was like, damn, they should have just not included Venom in this movie. They should have just stayed with Sandman, just stick with that, and maybe uh, the the new Goblin, that's what they called him, the new Goblin, which still is not the true Green Goblin to me, but blah, whatever. But anyways, the second movie with Dr. Octopus was fantastic, and the first movie with Oh, crap. What was his name who played uh, Green Goblin? Well, anyways, that was fine because, you know, it was the first time we've gotten a decent Spider-Man movie. And, um, you know, <laughs> it just went downhill from there, from the uh, third one and the reboots also. But now we have Spider-Man Homecoming with Tom Holland playing Peter Parker this time around. And... I liked his acting in Captain America Civil War. I, I liked him as Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, in that film. And that's also another reason why I wanted to check out his solo film, which is Spider-Man Homecoming. And um, the director, what was the director's name? Hold on, I have to look this up on IMDb. Give me a few seconds. John Watts? John Watts, the director, he said he wanted to make this... A high school film and he was not kidding this definitely does feel like a high school movie because you are dealing with a much younger Peter Parker this time around you know you get to see him go through high school and interact with other teenagers and there's just a whole lot of uh, teenage antics that just goes on throughout this film and yeah you do get um, quite a bit of spider-man as well oh one minor gripe I have with the film is the CGI. Personally, for me, I kind of have an eye for this stuff, you know, where CGI just looks a little bit too obvious or just looks a little bit too good. When you first see Tom Holland put on the Spider-Man costume and swing around the city, I was like, ah, damn, they still, after all these years, after all of these Spider-Man films, they didn't nail the CGI. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you look at something like 
uh, uh, War for Planet of the Apes. If you look at the um, apes in that film and how almost like photorealistic they look compared to Spider-Man swinging around a bunch of times in Spider-Man Homecoming, you, you'll know what I mean. But um, everything else about the movie was good. So I can forgive the CGI. I mean, yeah, it is obvious, but the movie was fun. It was enjoyable. It did make me laugh a lot. So I will forgive the special effects. Um, oh, yeah, Michael Keaton. Uh, good casting choice to play Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. the Vulture. I wasn't sure if he was going to be another Marvel villain where they just kind of like throw him off to the side and be the, you know, typical... Marvel villain in the movie universe, but no, they actually gave him a uh, a good story that most people can relate to on some level. I mean, the guy got screwed over and he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to turn to maybe a life of crime to save my family. You know, he's not doing, he's not being bad for no reason. You know, he's doing it for a purpose pretty much. And, uh, there is a twist. There is a twist, which I can't really uh, talk about that because I don't want to give away spoilers in this film. Uh, thank God I stayed away from spoilers. I stayed away from the comment sections. I stayed away uh, from... Well, I did listen to some reviews, but the reviews I listened to for this movie were safe. They were spoiler-free. So when I saw that spoiler in the film... Or not spoiler, I, I'm sorry, but that twist... When I saw that twist in the film, I was like, whoa, no way. So this is going to make things more tense here. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was great. Great twist. Once again, not going to say what it is. Go see the film. So, um, yeah, this, this Spider-Man, enjoyable. I mean, what else can I say about it? Uh, I guess I could touch upon the other actors. Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. Hey, Marissa Tomei, I don't know how old she is. See, I grew up with Sp um with Aunt May. I grew up with Aunt May from the 616 universe, is that correct? Where, you know, she's old, she's frail, she has the gray hair. And now, you know, with each of these Spider-Man reboots, we keep getting a younger and younger Aunt May. And um I know Marissa Tomei is supposed to be like in her 50s or 60s in real life, but she still looks attractive. I mean, Marissa Tomei, she still got it. And her as Aunt May, I'm sorry. I'm like, I don't buy this as an old lady. I mean, maybe she she's like an old hot lady. I don't know. She's she's attractive. Damn. And they do kind of touch upon that in the film. Like they don't throw it in your face saying, hey, she's hot. No, they make subtle uh, jokes, like subtle moments in the film to kind of you know, touch upon the fact that she is attractive. Um, but yeah, her as Aunt May was fine. I would say just fine. They didn't really show too much of her. Just nice little subtle moments where she is talking to Peter Parker. Uh, John Favreau's back as the assistant to Tony Stark. And, you know, he's John Favreau. What else can I say about the guy? But... I would say he's the same like as I've always remembered him from the Iron Man films. He's just about the same character. He plays a uh, Happy Hogan. Um oh, oh that's right. Another character is back. I don't want to say who that is because uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that would be a spoiler, so I don't know if I want to Yeah, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it, but Another character you've seen from previous Marvel films is back, who interacts with um, some of the characters in the film. Once again, I don't want to spoil who it is because I don't want you guys to be pissed off and be like, oh, why'd you say that certain character was in the film? No, oh, great. No, I, I, I'm not going to say it. Uh, it's not a major character. It's just a supporting actress. That's Yes, that's why I will say. I don't think you guys will get... Who I'm saying, who I'm talking about, but it's a supporting actress, yes. Uh, Zendaya, who or Zendaya, sorry, who plays Michelle, was pretty good. Pretty good. I liked her. She was pretty funny. Um, Donald Glover, who plays Aaron 
Davis. I believe he just played some random criminal guy. Um, his interactions with Spider-Man was pretty funny. Like I said, humor throughout the film. Uh, Jacob Batalon, who plays Ned. Ned is pretty much Peter Parker's best friend. Uh, he's the one in the trailer who you've seen drop the... Uh, the uh, Lego Death Star set after he's seen Spider-Man crawling on the ceiling. That's that guy. Uh, he was pretty humorous. He had a lot of funny moments in the film. A lot of funny, funny, funny moments in the film. There's one moment that made me laugh out loud. I couldn't stop laughing, but um, he was great. I mean, at first he might seem like maybe just a little bit annoying, but you get used to it. You do get used to it. Uh, Laura Harrier as Liz... Pretty much, not really the love interest, but the girl who Peter Parker has a crush on. Um, she was, She's a good actress. I don't think they really showed much of her. She was kind of sprinkled throughout the movie, but she is an attractive actress to look at. <laughs> uh, but no, in all seriousness, she is good. Uh, you have Tony... I don't know how to pronounce this. Tony Rivolari... <sighs> Sorry to the actor, Tony Revolari. I don't know how to pronounce that last name, but uh, he plays the Flash, or as you all know, Flash Thompson for those uh, true Spider-Man comic book fans out there. Uh, he, I don't know. He, I don't know how to talk about his character. He was okay. I mean... He did play kind of like a dick, because Flash Thompson is a dick, but they didn't really go overboard with it to the fact where he's, like, bullying Peter Parker every chance he's gotten. Because, you know, in the previous films, you've seen Flash Thomas, or Flash Thompson, sorry. You see Flash Thompson, like, bullying Peter Parker a lot to the extreme. And you don't really see... um Tony Revol, Revol sorry, Tony Revolori doing that a lot, but you do see him being a dick at certain moments in the film towards Peter Parker. Um, and of course you have a few other actors. Jesus, so many of actors in this film. Uh, there are certain Easter eggs to other Spider-Man villains by name and by character. Yeah, they are in the film. They are at certain. Uh, certain uh, parts in the film that I don't want to talk too much about because I don't want to give too much away. And, uh, oh, if you are worried about seeing um, Robert Downey Jr. too much in the film, uh, don't worry. It does focus on Peter Parker heavily throughout the movie. Yeah, Tony Stark does come in and give Peter Parker a pep talk every time he screws up. Like, all right, what did you do now? But, um, no, the, the, the movie, yeah, it, it focuses heavily on Spider-Man. It's not an Iron Man movie. So I know they showed that in the some of the trailers and, and he, he was in some of the posters that people had a problem with. They were like, oh, what, is this going to be Iron Man's movie now? No, not really. No, 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 it's not. It's a Spider-Man movie through the beginning and to, to the end. Um, and even the beginning of the film was pretty cool. I, I like what they did with the beginning. You get to see some background on Adrian Toomes and get to see how everything led up to, you know, other events in the film uh, with his character. But, uh yeah. It was a fun Spider-Man movie. It was a... No, funny, I should say. Well, yeah, fun and funny. Sorry, it's late, and I really want to eat some of my groceries because I went grocery shopping, so I'm just, like, eyeing my hot dogs and chips over on the counter. But uh, I would say check it out, and uh, I, if I would have to give it a rating, I would give this Spider-Man film a 4 out of 5 stars. It's not perfect, but it's good. It's good. It's a great time, and also you get to see how it connects with the other Marvel films. Like, they do show connections with um, the first Avengers film. There's some stuff in there that you, get, you you know get to pick out and see, some certain Easter eggs and stuff. 
But uh, yeah, four out of five for me. Check it out. Sorry if this review went on for too long. I was trying to talk about most of the actors, um, actors and actresses, I should say. And the next film I'm going to see this year is Thor Ragnarok, because that looks like a lot of fun. So I will be definitely checking that out. Uh, Thor Ragnarok and uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi, which is coming out in December. Uh, I'm not sure about War for the Planet of the Apes just yet. Like, ah, oh man, I'm trying to get my friend into the uh, Planet of the Apes series because he has not seen those yet, but I have. And I enjoyed them. And the next one, War for Planet of the Apes, looks fantastic. Um, but yeah, for now, it's just looking like Thor Ragnarok and uh, Star Wars. Uh, all right. So uh, thanks for watching this spoiler-free review. No spoilers included. Just pretty much letting you know what you need to know when you go into the theater to see this film if you wish to do so or if you want to wait till it comes out on blu-ray hey that's fine too nobody's forcing you to go see this film but uh yeah i'm gonna go eat some hot dogs or some wieners some wiener schnitzels make some milkshakes because it's summertime and relax yeah relax